The bell plates group of U3A, Flinchy U3A, have just finished their weekly two hour practice and we're in their hall in Buckley <laughs> that they have been filling with musical elements for the last couple of hours. And I'm joined by Pat and Don. Pat's the organiser of the group and Don is a member of the group and they're going to tell me and us about bell plates. Explain, first of all, what bell plates are. They're generally shaped like paint scrapers and they're very highly machined. The idea came from the University of Sydney in Australia about 30 years ago and we've been playing them for the last 13. And how many, that was two or three years ago, how long have you been going? I think this has this group as a whole about we 13 years. 13 years. 13 we started years. 2004. Yes. That is a long time. Yeah, isn't it? I um, haven't been going 13 Jones years. Jones is the oldest, is the longest serving member. How many, I suppose, do you need for a full complement of pelt? Well, that, that would be rather nice. I mean, it will be 16. Gosh. We would really like, but of course, new 3A, and people are always going away on holiday, aren't they? All they are. People are allowed to be off sick or something like that. So the weekly commitment is really quite hard to maintain. So we really like more than 16 people, mm. uh, so that then you can uh, have somebody to stand in when somebody's away on holiday. Because I know a lot of groups in new 3A either meet fortnightly or monthly, mm. or they have a mm. very flexible mm. timetable mm. of meetings. But you are, in a way, uh, need to be focused in order to maintain the, mm-hmm. the standard of the. Well, they're all doing it as skill. Yeah. Which, and it's a, it's a very unusual experience for people of our age to join mm-hmm. a group where everybody's dependent on each other yeah. in a team. So, presumably, one of the uh, prerequisites is the ability to read music. Isn't Not at all. Isn't it? Not at all, no, no. I think it's it's very useful, let's put it that way, but it's not essential by oh, any right. means. Uh, we, we, I suppose you could say we cheat, because remember that you're only playing one note at a time. Right. So, when it's your turn, as it were, or time to play that one note put a little circle round it. Right. And so so people who can't read music, that is then highlighted. And so they can just count as long as you can count. <laughs> see one, two, three, four, one, two, three, then you can make a start. Yeah. Now I'm not going to say that it's easy and you do it just like that. You have to learn to listen to other people at the same time. And to and yet and yet not lose pace. Mm. You have to learn about tempo, and there's a lot to it. But at least that is a great help having what we call marked music. That's one advantage. The other advantage is that we we sometimes move around because if people are away, then that spot has mm. to be filled. So people shuffle around, and if you get accustomed to playing in your own music and your own way, to suddenly find yourself in another position. You think, oh, where am I? What can I play? And where do I turn the page? Blah de blah. Uh, and so, what you really so you need to do, if you've got a marked music, plate. yes, mm. if you've got marked music, then uh, it means that you can go to another place. Plate and make sure that they're on task, as it were. <laughs> because <laughs> it is quite, I think one of the hardships for all of us is actually keeping an eye on the conductor as well as looking at your music, as well as playing your bells. Yeah. But hey, that's, uh, that's how musicians work, isn't it? Now, I know you do take out, once you have um, honed, as it were, the various pieces that you do, you do take them out to other venues, don't you? We certainly yeah. do, yes. So who are the people you sort of performed for? Uh, recently? Well, we go to the memory cafes. The, the, the memory cafes in Mould and Moss. Mm-hmm. Churches in Chester. I think it's sometimes a deterrent to new people joining us. They think about it and they think, oh, I can't possibly mm. do that. But once you get involved with the bells, then you have a kind of pride in what you're doing and, and you want to go out. And it's a target what we're working for it's you're not going to concentrate if when you come Mm. there's no there's no achievement at the end of it you're just going to start chatting and not making any progress so we do kind of it does help us to focus we have an aim we have a goal and i have to say it was don who really taught me that Mm. 
and I first joined, oh no, I didn't want to play out. But now, um, I'm not going to say we don't get anxious, of course we get anxious. Uh, no, no. Well, yeah. See what they like. Well, people come and go, and then they stay, and that's what U3 is all about, experience. Mm-hmm. It is, it is, exactly. Oh. And it is fun. I would like to stress that, oh. it is fun here. It, oh, it, it sounds fun. very serious when we talk about <laughs> rehearsing to play out, but the getting there is fun, isn't it? Yeah. We do have fun. So, well, thanks, thanks Don, and thanks, Pat, for telling us all about bell plate ringers or bell plateers <laughs> or bell platers or whatever you want to call this. And I hope it does uh, uh, encourage people to uh, look at your numbers and, and give you a ring and perhaps come along and, and give it a try. Who knows? Well, they'd be very well. Thank you very much, Jess. We'd love to see you meet you people.